obviously they're going to find somebody else. And one of the issues Intel now has is that the bench is a little thin right now as some of the senior managers have left over the past couple of years. So, you know, one of the questions is, does Intel go inside or outside? They've never had an outside CEO. That's not a play on the advertising campaign. No. Intel inside <laughs> or outside. Um, as a result, though, what do, you, what do you think of the stock? Well, we've been market performing the stock for, for a bit of a while. Uh, you know, things outside of, of, of obviously this and, and the CEO search. Um, you know, what we think is it, it, the, the tough part for Intel right now is, you know, more than 60% of their revenue is coming from legacy markets, PCs, enterprise server, which, you know, are in decline. So, you know, what, what, what the, the BK, Brian Kazanich, right. was, was trying to do was, you know, remake the company and, and kind of grow the areas outside of there. And so far, the fruits of that have not been apparent just yet. And do you think if a new manager comes in there, they're going to take a completely different look at this and say, you know what, actually, we don't want to, we don't want to do it this way. I mean, that's, that's the big risk, right? It, it's, it's possible. And for, for example, one of the areas that they've been focusing on right now is memory. And the memory markets right now are, are, are very hot. Uh, so that, that market is, is, is doing well. But there's a question, you know, if you compare, for example, Micron's trading at about a five multiple. So even if you're successful in the memory market, are you actually going to get a, a, right. a multiple? On that? Before we go down uh, and look at each, each of the chip makers individually, mm -hmm. speak to the trade issue. Meaning, how important is the trade issue for these chip makers at all? Well, it's, or is it? Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly important. Is it? It's one of the areas that's been been targeted, right. you know, kind of in, in this. Um, in terms of how it plays out, I just think it's incredibly difficult to, to figure this out. Um, in that, you know, it, every every single day, you know, a different piece of news is moving in a different direction. But uh, I, w I would assume you've already removed the takeover premium from the chip sector, right? People are going to wake up. And see front page. Right. And, you know, and none of these guys can get bought by a Chinese company. I was getting there. Thank you. Yes. Right. Uh, and that's right. You already but, knew that, right? Yes. But it doesn't mean, you know, there's still been consolidation in the space from other players as well. But certainly the, the Chinese portion of it, yeah, that's that. That's, well, what, I mean, what, what was that? I mean, they were crazy buyers willing to pay crazy things for a while. I mean, the Chinese government itself right. had slowed down the outward flow of investment. Right. But this is one sector mm -hmm. that they were very eager to try to control at this point, right? So if the Chinese were able buyers, what kind of premium would you get? It's hard to say. I mean, I, I would say probably for the last three or four quarters, it's probably been out um, because there have been some deals like, like Lattice Semiconductor, for example. Uh, that was the big one, one that I'm That was the big right. one that was, that was stopped. Aren't and they also holding up the Qualcomm NXP? Deal. The Chinese so, are. Yeah, the Chinese. that's are. the thing. They don't have to be buyers. They could just sort of stall these other deals yeah. where they're they're a big market player. And and so far, that's the only one that has seemed to be in a, been affected. For example, there was another uh, a chip deal, a microchip, micro semi, that did go through, and they did get approval on it. So what it, it appears that the Chinese are being very specific in terms of you know what 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 they're using as as the chess pieces here. In terms of the whole group, they've kind of given up leadership a little bit. The semiconductor sector, the semiconductor. Dr. Capital equipment sector has underperformed. What does that tell you about the cycle? Is it still as cyclical as it used to be? I, I think it's still cyclical. Um, and uh, it, it's a little different than what it's been in the past, that, that space in general is acting a little more rationally uh, because it's generally a slow growth. It's a more mature industry than it was 10 years ago. But I tell you, you know, from what I hear from my companies, they sound very good right now. And usually, from at least from a fundamental standpoint, the semis are usually a leader it, it, with regard to the business cycle, and right now they sound pretty. Your good. favorites, Nvidia. Uh, it, it's it's one of the favorites, and I mean it's a good you know counter for Intel at, at, at this point because you know Nvidia right now is doing very well in in the data center space, specifically artificial intelligence. It's one of the areas that that Intel you know just didn't establish leadership in, uh, and you know I I think that stock has. A How far are the Chi by the way back to the trade issue for a second? Mm -hmm. How far are the Chinese behind? Meaning you look at you look at some of the chip make, mm -hmm. chip makers over there. Well, I wouldn't even say they're behind. They're, they're not really even at the table at this point. So one of the things the Chinese want to do is they, they have this China 2025 strategy. Right. Semiconductors is a piece of that. And, um, you know, again, without U.S. technology, it's difficult for them to get there, which is, you know, the heart of this battle right now. Which is why CFIUS had already made clear that these deals weren't even going to happen even before this news comes out about Chinese right. investment in the United right. States. But like right now, there's, there's semiconductor manufacturing in China. Intel, for example, has a memory plant there. Um, and so, you know, I mean, I, I would say that's probably an area where China can, you know, get into the market more easily. Uh, you know, certainly over the history of semiconductors, you know, sovereigns we, we started Japan and Korea. You know, this has been, you know, national policy uh, for, for a, lot of, a lot of different nations o over time, um, usually in the memory space.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.